Carbohydrates, they're one of the most controversial food groups. To bring clarity into this topic, I looked at all the studies in regards to carbohydrate intake and mortality risk. And in this video, I'm going to outline you the conclusions of these studies. I'm the party pooper. The first paper on this topic, it's the 2018 meta-analysis in the journal The Lancet. They observed adults in the US between the ages of 45 and 64 over the course of 25 years. The results show the U-shaped association between carbohydrate intake and all-cause mortality. An intake of 50 to 55% of total calories from carbs was linked to the lowest risk of mortality. Getting less than 40% of calories from carbs was linked to a 20% higher risk of mortality and getting more than 70% of your calories from carbs was linked to a 23% higher risk of mortality. A 2022 re-evaluation of this 2018 paper pointed out that the original study didn't look at low-carb diets as a specific intervention, but instead relied on data from prospective epidemiological studies. The data was obtained from food questionnaires, which has a very high rate of error and inaccuracies. What's more, the subjects were questioned twice at a six-year interval. Now, this is quite important and a huge flaw of epidemiology studies, you know, how many people remember what kind of foods they ate over the past six years, not to mention how many times they ate these foods every week in the course of these six years. Lastly, the strength of association in the study wasn't that great either, as the low carbohydrate intake only yielded a 20% increased risk of mortality compared to the moderate intake. The authors also pointed out that there are short-term clinical trials showing that carbohydrate restriction has been seen to improve metabolic syndrome, diabetes, and weight loss. A 2021 meta-analysis on 23 clinical trials discovered that six months of following a low-carb diet resulted in higher rates of remission compared to the control diet. However, after about a year, the differences between the diets evened out. Similar outcomes have been seen in weight loss studies, where it's shown that the differences between low-carb and low-fat diets flatten out after a year. Now, these randomized clinical trials are still done in the free world, meaning that they don't control for all the energy intake. In metabolic ward studies, where all of the energy intake is controlled for and kept equal between the groups, carbohydrate restriction hasn't been found to be superior to high carb intake as long as the protein and calories are matched. When it comes to mortality and carbohydrate intake, then the biggest problem is that we obviously can't do lifelong human studies. It's virtually impossible to do a lifelong metabolic ward study where you control all the food intake of humans and even like a randomized clinical trial is very hard to do over the course of multiple years. That's why when it comes to mortality and dietary patterns, then kind of the best evidence we have or the only evidence that we really have is the epidemiological studies. The 2017 PURE study among individuals from 18 different countries across the globe found the lowest total mortality at a carbohydrate intake of 50 to 55 percent and higher risk of mortality above 60 percent. The highest quartile of carbohydrate intake, which was 77.2 percent of total calories, was linked to 28 percent higher risk of mortality compared to the lowest quantile, which was 46.4 percent. For total fat intake, the highest quartile, which was 35.3% of total calories from fat, had a 23% lower risk of mortality compared to the lowest quartile, which was 10.6% of total calories from fat. The results suggest that a balanced diet is what gives you the best reduction in mortality risk. In this study, the lowest mortality was 46% for carbohydrate intake and 35% fat intake. So it was this kind of a balanced diet that was found across the globe to be associated with the lowest risk of mortality. Another important factor that contributes to this finding is the quality of the diet. A 2023 prospective cohort study among 371,000 subjects discovered that a healthy low-carb diet was associated with a 5% decrease in mortality. An unhealthy low-carb diet was associated with an 18% higher risk of mortality. When it came to the low-fat diet, then a healthy low-fat diet was linked to 18% lower risk of mortality, 16% lower cardiovascular mortality, and 18% cancer mortality. This is supported by a 2020 study among 37,000 US adults aged 20 or older that found unhealthy low-carb and low-fat diets were associated with higher total mortality. So so the food quality and the quality of your carbohydrates matters when it comes to reduction in mortality risk. If you eat an unhealthy food, even if it's moderate carb or high carb or low carb, doesn't matter, then the unhealthy food is what's going to increase your mortality risk. How many carbohydrates a person should eat depends on their metabolic health. Individuals who have insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes or obesity might benefit from short-term periods of carbohydrate restriction and low-carb diets, but there's no evidence that they're superior 
you could also achieve the same effects with a high carb low fat diet however based on long term decades long of epidemiological studies we do find that a carbohydrate intake somewhere between 45 to 55 percent is associated with a lower risk of mortality than carbohydrate intakes above 60 percent and below 40 percent so most of the evidence points towards the fact that a moderate carbohydrate intake somewhere between 45 to 55 percent is what gives you the lowest risk of mortality and lowest risk of cardiovascular disease mortality coincidentally a carbohydrate intake of 48 to 56 percent of total calories has also been seen to be associated with the highest levels of serum clotho which is a transmembrane protein linked to longevity now the role of this clotho protein and longevity is still under investigation we don't necessarily know what's the actual impact of this clotho protein on your longevity but it is interesting to see that the highest levels of this clotho protein are also the same levels of carbohydrate intake that's associated with the lowest risk of mortality but there's no causal link that we know of so at the end of the day you have to figure out which diet works for you the best you have to look at your blood work to understand what's the optimal carbohydrate intake for you healthier individuals are of course able to eat more carbohydrates with less side effects but that's actually a good thing if you're able to eat more carbohydrates without it affecting your blood sugar and insulin levels negatively you're in better health than your all-cause mortality is naturally going to be lower the individuals who have poorer metabolic health they can't eat that many carbohydrates without it affecting their blood work negatively so these individuals with poorer metabolic health at a baseline will already have a higher risk of all-cause mortality at the baseline so you can't really compare apples to oranges when it comes to different people and their carbohydrate intake healthier people are able to eat more carbohydrates and because they're healthier their risk of all-cause mortality is also lower if you do want to slow down aging and add healthy years to your life then i'm looking for more people who want to do that if you're interested then email me the word health to info at and i'll send you the details but other than that thanks for watching this video make sure you click the like subscribe notification bell as well my name is seem stay optimized stay empowered